in Al-Andalus, the Islamic region in southern Spain, the Umayyad prince Abd al-Rahman, brought up within the great artistic tradition of Damascus, adopted certain Hispanic and Visigothic influences. He turned Cordoba, capital of the new and flourishing emirate, and from 929 onward, a self-proclaimed caliphate, into one of the most splendid cities of the world. This brand of artistic and cultural flowering left an indelible mark on the art of the Iberian Peninsula and the Maghreb that endured for centuries. Between the 8th and 10th centuries, the art and culture of Cordoba made headway in nearly every field, most notably in the domain of architecture. The crowning example here would be the Mesquita or Great Mosque of Cordoba. Planned by Abd al-Rahman and completed around 786, it took three successive campaigns to erect the exterior of the Great Mosque. The powerful walls swell with huge buttresses pierced by open entryways and elaborate decorative programs that left their mark not only on all succeeding art in Al-Andalus, but also on Norman and Gothic architecture centuries later. Above the doorways, the upper tiers of decorative elements develop into elegant, intersecting, horseshoe-shaped arches, resulting into steeply rising pointed arches. The arch above the doorway is bordered with Alfie's decoration. Alfie's is an architectural adornment consisting of molding, usually a rectangular panel, that encloses the outward side of an arch. It was later also used in non-Arab Spanish architecture. In this schematic drawing, the Alfie's starts either from the impost here in gray on the left, or from the floor as seen here on the right. The elegant little windows on the sides, protected by marble grating, are crowned by polyfoil arches which provide a graceful counterpoint for the center feature. Realized over a period of more than two centuries, the Great Mosque of Cordoba was inspired by the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem and the Great Mosque of Damascus. The structure was enlarged at several occasions, most notably under the minister Al-Mansur, who had less precious materials at his disposal than Abd al-Rahman earlier. Maybe also out of respect for the earlier builder, the porphyry columns, over 500 of them, which were most likely spoils of war from Carthage, were too short. Out of this shortcoming, the builders opted for two superimposed orders of horseshoe-shaped arches, resulting in a design of singular aesthetic effect and beauty. Added during the enlargement undertaken by Al-Hakam II between 961 and 976, the element in line with the mihrab, known as the Capilla de la Villa Viciosa, interrupts the rational architectural order with semicircular arches displaying scalloped edging. This multiplying of the depth of the various planes results in a theatrical element setting the stage for the mihrab only a couple of feet behind it. Resting on an octagon is a 12-part umbrella dome which is lit by an effective lighting system of 16 small windows with polyfoil arches. The cupola crowning the mihrab was also created by Al-Hakam II. Its basis is formed by two squares rotated against each other in a 45 degree angle, generating an octagonal base. The dome is decorated with exceptional mosaics, comparable to the mosaics at the Great Mosque of Damascus. Some of the Byzantine masters responsible for this work 
were dispatched by Nisophorus Phocas, a Byzantine emperor. At the outskirts of Cordoba are ruins of Madinat as Sahra, a new city built by Abd al-Rahman in only 25 years, which was razed to the ground during the upheavals of the 11th century. The excavation site includes remnants of a caliphal palace, military dwellings, several terraces, fountains, pools, and cages housing wild animals and exotic birds. In Al-Andalus, the production of ivory objects reached unsurpassed levels of quality, comparable in terms of imagination to the architecture of the period. Surviving pieces include the pyxis of Prince Al-Mugira from 968. A pyxis is a shape of a vessel from the classical world, usually a cylindrical box with a separate lid, as you can see here. It is an ivory carved container made in one of the workshops of al Madinat al-Sahra near Cordoba. It was most likely a coming-of-age present for the son of Caliph Abd al-Rahman III. We know this because of the inscription around the base of the lid that reads, quote, Blessing from God, goodwill, happiness, and prosperity to al mukira son of the commander of the faithful. May God's mercy be upon him, made in the year 357 which works out to the western year of 968. Noteworthy is the way in which the plant interlace unwinds and defines with unsurpassed precision the space in which the human figures and animals act out various scenes. Another famous ivory carving is the so-called Pamplona casket. It was made in Cordoba in 1004 or 1005 Common Era and shows a Kufic inscription which reveals the artist Faraj and the year of its production. This casket was made for Abd al-Malik al-Musafar for the occasion of his victory over the kingdom of Leon. For a number of centuries, it was used in the Lyre Monastery to store the relics of the saints Nunilona and Alodia. Rectangular in shape, it has a truncated pyramidal lid. An uninterrupted plated ribbon encloses 21 medallions, 13 on the lid and 8 on the body of the casket. The medallions are interlaced with vegetal motifs, birds, animals, and figures. The three medallions in the front show scenes from courtly life. On the right scene, a bearded figure with a mustache is seated on a throne resting on two lions. This might be a portrait of the ruling caliph, flanked by servants. This tiraz fragment is all that remains from a classic garment adorned with elaborate embroidery. It dates from 976 to 1013, from the reign of Hisham II, and was probably woven in Cordoba. The wide band in the center unfolds a series of octagonal medallions containing animals, birds, or human figures. In the realm of metalwork, we could mention this spout of a fountain in the form of a stag, discovered at the Madinat as Sahra site, which is dated in the later half of the 10th century. The sculpture would have stood on a hollow base connected to a cylindrical tube for the water to pass through and spout out of its mouth. Its horns have disappeared. The animal's body is covered in twisting stems and veined leaves in low relief. The Spanish Umayyad rulers also had a penchant for silver and gold as this casket from Gerona, dated at 976, illustrates. Umayyad, Fatimid, and Abbasid sources report 
how the practice of exchanging valuable objects was widespread between the members of the elite. Some even served as state gifts. Very few of these pieces survived to modern times, one of which is this casket. It is a wooden box plated with embossed, yellowed and gilded silver plates with vegetal decoration. From the inscription we learn that the object was made by goldsmiths Badr and Tarif, who also left their signatures on the clasp. Upon the dissolution of the caliphate, emirs in various cities in Al-Andalus assumed regal titles and launched extravagant architectural projects. Abu Jafar Ahmad ibn Suleiman, for example, built the al Haferia in Zaragoza, Spain. It was the residence of the Banu Hud dynasty, an Arab dynasty that ruled the Taifa of Zaragoza from 1039 to 1110. A Taifa is an independent, Muslim-ruled principality in Al-Andalus. Outwardly, the al Haferia is a powerful fortress with a moat. Inside, it is a sumptuous arbor, equipped with all the most up-to-date comforts and sophisticated artistic contrivances. The rectangular courtyard is closed by a portico with pointed polyfoil arches, comparable to structures in Cordoba, Granada, and Morocco. These highly refined, playful arches formed the backdrop to princes playing hosts to poets, guests, and hedonistic banquets, complete with wine, food, verse, and music.